when you find yourself in danger, when you're threatened by a stranger, when it looks like you will take a licking, <laughs> there is someone waiting who will hurry up and rescue you. Just call for Super Chicken. But if you're afraid, you'll have to overlook it. Besides, you knew the job was dangerous when you took it. He will drink his super sauce and throw the bad guys for a loss, and he will bring them in alive and kicking. <laughs> there is one thing you should learn when there is no one else to turn to. Call for Super Chicken. Call for Super Chicken. Our story begins in the desolate countryside just outside Pittsburgh, PA. This is sinister Happy Dell Castle, home of the distinguished mad scientist, Dr. Kudby. At last, be gone. My life's work, ready for the finishing stroke. Pull the switch. This is going to play heck with the light bill, Doc. It's worth it, Igor. For look, on the table, my masterpiece. The world's first living toupee. A wig that actually grows. Look, it's just a butch. Now it's a ducktail surfer. Now it's a beetle cut. Now it's just ridiculous. And the mad scientist found himself trapped in an ominous writhing mass of angry hair. Down! Down, boy! We've created a monster! How come all of a sudden it's we? Trick! Get a hairnet! Large size! Too late. The living toupee leaped from a parapet into the inky night. Its first stop was at a barber shop where it smashed a window and consumed 14 gallons of hair tonic. Maddened by the tonic, the hairpiece went on a night-long spree of destruction. The citizens were terrified. Look! There it is! Yes, the fantastic wig had draped itself atop the tallest building in Pittsburgh. Fortunately, the penthouse of that building was the home of Henry Cabot Henhouse III. Known to a favorite few as Super Chicken. And his friend, Fred. Known to a favorite few as Poopsie. It's stuffy in here, Fred. Open the window. Okay. As Fred opened the window, a lock of maddened hair entered and seized him. Put me down, whatever you are. Seizing a nearby blade, Henry snipped through the hair, releasing Fred. But cluttering up the carpet, something fierce. A wild hair on the loose. This looks like a job for... The Pittsburgh Barber College. No, Fred. They got a great varsity squad this year. Fred, please. Number one in all the barber polls. Fred! Okay, okay. It's a job for super chicken. Get the super sauce. Right. Here. So soon? It's the new instant sauce. You just add water. <laughs> I should have told you. Boiling water. The super sauce went to work, and in no time, Henry was changed from a pin-feathered chicken into a fine-feathered super chicken. Do the super coop, Fred. Roger Wilcox. And once more, the mighty bird took to the sky... In his never-ending battle against injustice, evil, and high food prices. There it is, Fred. An enormous living today. It certainly makes that old building look years younger. First, I'll give it a shot from my wristwatch disintegrator. This thing needs a good cleaning. Why? It disintegrated. Hang on, Fred. I'm going to change the Super Coop into its electric razor configuration. With his egg craft changed to a razor, Super Chicken dived again and again at the hairy monster. But the hair grew faster than he could cut it. Next, he tried Super Hairspray. It only made the hair shiny and soft to the touch. But at last, weary of the game and badly hacked at the sideburns, the giant toupee slid off the building and disappeared into the streets of downtown Pittsburgh. We'll have to track it down, Fred. How? Easy. We'll follow that trail of unsightly dandruff. But it was harder than it appeared, for the giant toupee was a cunning thing. In Nebraska, it bleached itself blonde and disguised itself as a wheat field. In Oklahoma, it doused itself with greasy kid stuff and disguised itself as a huge pool of oil. Weeks later in Texas, at the Houston Barber Supply Warehouse, where it had glutted itself on the week's output of hair restorers. It's bigger than ever, Super Chicken. Fred, what makes hair fall out? Gravity? No, worry. Oh. We have to worry that giant toupee to death. 
And the brilliant bird started a campaign of worry against the monster. He made midnight telephone calls. I see what you're doing. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? He sent mysterious telegrams. Telegram for the living to pay. Congratulations. It's twins. Signed, Cupy. It's working. Look at that hair fall out. Pour it on, Fred. X-ray. Long hair causes tularemia, say doctors. Congress passes 20% tax on all hair. And then Super Chicken's master stroke. Special delivery from the draft board. You have been classified 1A. That did it. Within moments, the remaining hair had fallen. And all that remained was an enormous, powerless, bald. Yay! We're We're saved! But what are we Houston folks going to do with a ten-story dome? What else? Play ball! Yes, with a monstrous dome converted to a popular sports arena, the mighty chicken had done it again. So when you hear that cry in the sky... You'll know that super chicken is sitting way up in the bleachers.